Okay, guys, so... Hello, guys. I'm Shimmering Brony, and I'm gonna watch the uh, new announcement for the Smash fifth, the, for the fifth Smash DLC fighter. I've been waiting too much for this moment, and now it's time. I'm finally gonna check out who is gonna be the fifth fighter. Man, I'm I'm so bumped up for for the uh, uh, announcement. And I'm too nervous right now. Well, not too nervous. I really hope it's Hayabusa or Rimu. Mr. Sakurai is going to present. <sighs> Who is he going to be? Oh, yes. While I uh, voice chat with some of my friends. <sighs> Excuse me, guys. I'm nervous. I'm shaking. Sam. And it it's showtime. Hello. Wow. Oh my god, finally, finally, oh my god, oh my god. Hayabusa, Rimu, Ooh. Fire Emblem Three Houses, or what? The time has finally come to unleash the forbidden spell of Zaharas upon our enemies! <laughs> oh jeez, there better not be yet a Fire Emblem, Cather. What were you thinking, charging right into an enemy's trap? As you and I are one, I too am trapped within this void. In time, our hearts and minds will cease to be. Are you prepared to die? <clears throat> I thought as much. I also do not wish to die. And yet... <sighs> there is no other choice. <sighs> you must join Smash. What?! Join Smash Brothers already! What in the world are you waiting for? Wow. Be, be left, Violet. So joining Smash consumes even the darkness itself. Oh my god. This is what people... Uh, we're, uh, we're fearing for. Get a North Fire Emblem character at the 5th DLC. 
Are you? Oh my god! I expect some backlash. So return. I'm sooner than expected. I see. Too many swordsmen are there. And you? You wield the sword as well. What will you do? Oh, well, female. Huh. So that is how you plan to win the day. Hmm. So be it. I reward your cleverness this time. One of my friends is going to riot over this. How is this? Violet. Violet. At least she's cute. Hmm. Of anyone, you should be able to handle the hero's relics. With Aaron Fox, strike with superior reach. Use Amir's overwhelming power. Unleash the blinding speed of Fail Knot. Along with the sword of the creator, each weapon matches a direction. Many disappointments. Yeah, it's what people were freaking for. Smash Bros. Ultimate X, Fire Emblem, Three Houses. Because people had enough of that. Even, uh, even I. I thought. I read somewhere. Yes, there you have it. Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses is joining the battle. Fire Emblem Three Houses was released just last summer, so it's still very new. Even so, you'll soon be able to play as them in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This release is planned for January 28th. You'll have instant access if you have the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass, and it will also be available for purchase individually. In case you're not familiar with Fire Emblem or Three Houses, I'll explain a few things, so don't worry. I don't? First off, what is Fire Emblem? It's really hard to pronounce in Japanese. The producer said it's okay if I just say Fire Emblem. But when writing it, if you don't write Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem police will come and get you, so please be careful. <laughs> The series' first entry launched in Japan on the Famicom in 1990. You could say it was a pioneer in the genre of tactical role-playing games. You might be wondering what makes it particularly tactical. Well, it's tactical in that it simulates combat. You can think of it as moving pieces in a board game. Or in other words, a game in which you advance units across a grid and battle. When we talk about tactical games of that era, there were lots of ones in which you command tanks, aircrafts, and so on. But Fire Emblem was unique because each unit was a specific character, sort of like in role-playing games. I'm... Plus, what do I something feel about made this? stand out from other Nintendo products. Characters could permanently die. <laughs> That's pretty direct language, though, <laughs> so perhaps we should just say they're sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> but really, if a character one. fell in battle, you lose that unit. They'd be gone, and you couldn't use them again. Recent entries in the series maintain this concept of permadeath to some degree in classic mode and what have you. But a lot of games now allow strategic withdrawals, so to speak. In the older games, your units would really be gone, never to be mentioned again. Scary. The game's stories are told like chronicles of war, with increasingly distinct characters and engrossing scenarios. Several characters also appear in the Super Smash Bros. series, and six of the seven can use a counter-attack. It's their down special. 
There's actually a reason for this. When I was considering how to incorporate Fire Emblem Fighters into Super Smash Bros. Melee, I thought it might be interesting to reflect the turn-based nature of the original game. First comes your opponent's turn. They attack and you counter. Next comes your turn. And now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is the 17th game in the series. People who aren't Japanese in particular might be thinking, 17 games? There are that many? Well, if you include Fire Emblem Heroes in the remakes, but you don't include the Satellaview game, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE, and Fire Emblem Warriors, then it comes out to 17 games. Let's try saying them in the Fire Emblem Can You Say It Challenge. I'll give it a try. There you go, 17. <laughs> so you saw how I was counting in a weird way, right? I was counting in binary. This is zero. Fold this here and you get one, and then you get two. Then 2 plus 1 equals 3, so this would be 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then you get 16. Add 1 and you get 17. Awesome, isn't it? You can actually count up to 31 on one hand. And if you use both hands, you can count all the way up to 1023. If you've given up counting the knots in the tatami mat, you could always give it a go. Uh -huh. What is Fire Emblem Three Houses? In Japanese, the male version of the main character is called Bereto and the female version is called Beresu, but in English they share the same name, Byleth. Byleth becomes a professor who ends up leading one of three academic houses. Once you've chosen a house, you guide them through their school life and, well, you end up fighting the other houses. After a certain incident, five years pass, and you meet up with your grown-up students to battle against the other houses in their regions. It's a very sad game in which your former allies become enemies, turn hostile, and try to kill you. To understand the concept of Fire Emblem Three Houses, I played an early version of the game before its release. I've done the same thing before, with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example because I couldn't wait until launch to experience it or we'd have never made it in time. For that title, I borrowed an early version of the game for two days, ran around all the areas, saw the ending, and realized for the first time, hmm, I guess we can't really have Breath of the Wild's Princess Zelda as a fighter. I'm barely reacting to this. I did the same this time, but with there being three houses and multiple endings, it was really hard to get a feel for it. And of course, there weren't any walkthroughs I could reference. The game has multiple routes and the outcome of each is very different. Your experience will vary depending on the route you choose, and many of the characters you meet will adopt different roles in the story. I'll try to avoid spoilers when I'm talking about the fighter. I hope you'll understand. Before my demonstration, I should point out that when I did the Terry Bogard showcase video, I mentioned that it was recorded a month in advance. But this time, we have to account for the holidays and such, so we're filming two months in advance of this video's release. Right now, it's actually November. Hmm. Therefore, some of what I'm about to show you might differ a bit from the finished version. As always, I'm using a special in-game camera and such for demonstration purposes. Here I go. <laughs> so, this is our new fighter, Byleth. Sadly, they're lacking in mobility. It's maybe a bit better than Robin's, but that's about all you can say for them. Throws are not their strong point either. Their grab lacks range. But actually, you could say that they're distance demon. The hero's relic they use changes depending on the direction you input with the stick. Each of the hero's relics is a weapon that appears in Fire Emblem Three Houses. 
They look like bones, and there's a reason for that. First, let's talk about the weapon Byleth uses for upward inputs. Where they have a lot of sword fighters. The sword of the creator here is Byleth's default weapon. They use it for flurry attacks and tilt attacks, such as down tilt attacks, where it takes the form of a whip. They also use the sword for dash attacks and other moves. For their up smash attack, they'll whip the sword upward to launch enemies in the air. For their up air attack, they'll wave the whip sword overhead. The hit detection for this attack lasts for a relatively long time. The up special move is really something. The sword extends like this, allowing you to do things like this. It was pretty terrifying how I knocked him into the air with that attack. And in addition, you can do awful things like this. That said, you'll launch opponents upward until their damage reaches a certain percentage. Exceed that percentage and you'll need to be careful. You may find it helpful to mid-air dodge. I've already shown this, but you can also use it to latch onto edges. So that's the up special. Now for the sideways inputs. This is Eredvar, the same name as the weapon from Celtic mythology. First we'll go through the forward and back air attacks. As you can see, they have a long reach. Like so. Marth's air attack keeps opponents in check too, right? If Byleth does the same thing, you'd win out, so you should be able to beat it. Next, the side smash attack. This also has a long range. It'll connect even from here. Also, if you add an upward tilt, it will be stronger. And if you've knocked an opponent down, the side attack won't hit unless you add a downward tilt to aim for them. By the way, the tip of the lance is more powerful. The shaft part is weaker, so it's not suited to close combat. It won't deal much damage, and it won't launch opponents far. That's why, as a rule, you want to hit with the blade part aimed upward. Or downward in this case. Next, the side special move. Byleth will simply swing the lance like this, but again, it has excellent reach. For example, even when your opponent is at this distance, it'll still hit. Actually, you can do a smash attack to charge forward a little, like this. But as you'd expect, it can be easily shielded, so be careful. You guys are wondering... Use it in mid -air and I'm... Carve up a large area. Yes, I'm... Returning a bit disappointed because earlier, this is not really what I wanted. Reach, but they lack verticality. I want something... So really hyping. Well, although you'll be vulnerable when you land. Other now, than get the another fire link character. I thought the for these, by the will use an axe called I the, the fire pass was gonna be for it's named uh, after a weapon third party characters. First, the down air attack. It nope. really is strong. You can try for a meteor effect with this attack. Next is the down smash attack. A heavy swing of the axe back and forth. As you can see, it has a great deal of launch power. And for the down special, Byleth channels all their energy into a devastating strike. It's a bold move, similar to the Falcon Punch, but here's what makes it different. When readying the move, there's a super armor effect, which allows you to withstand an attack. Better be a really good character from Just what so you I can know, see. If you execute a Falcon Punch at about the same time, it plays out like this. Wow. It's a bit slower than the Falcon Punch, but due to the super armor effect, you have the advantage. Unless you get grabbed. 
Another notable aspect is that it lets you pass through platforms. While you're charging up, you can breeze past platforms like this to reach a lower area. It won't let you jump, but you could use it as a surprise attack. Also, you can turn around during the move. Are there really the uh, Western while. people who actually wanted so if an a, runs a Fire Emblem Hedwig Houses rep? Can quickly change direction. I don't think so. Even though it can be hard to land a hit with this move, it can be really effective when used against a group of opponents. Plus, even if you fail to land a direct hit, any opponents on the ground nearby will still be launched a little. It's as if the quaking of the ground launches them. By the way, earlier I talked a little bit about the other Fire Emblem characters' moves. I don't recommend using this down special against fighters from the Fire Emblem series, because you'll just get loads of counters. It hits with that much power in a single attack. Counters can actually multiply the power of blocked attacks, and using easily anticipated attacks like this could just get you hit by counter after counter. Next, we have the neutral moves. The bow you use is called Fela, which shares its name with the bow from the Knights of the Round Table. It only appears in a few neutral moves. You've got the neutral air attack. This attack is similar to a move of Pitts and other fighters like him. It lets you spin the weapon around. It's also easy to create certain combos with it. And with the neutral special, you'll let loose an arrow. It seems pretty straightforward, right? But there are a few noteworthy aspects to this bow. First, the biggest difference between this bow and Lynx is that once you enter the command, you can keep charging until it's ready. I think reading the... You can't release it partway through the charge, so when it does fire, the arrow travels at high speed. The trigger it's replies very powerful. It's gonna be fun. That said, you can still cancel out of the stance using the shield button. And I seriously feel a bit bad for Sakurai. You can also change direction while in the stance. It works up until this point, but if you keep holding the button, you'll unleash a powerful arrow that looks like a beam of light. You can perform this move by keeping the button held down. You charge up power like so, charge a bit more, and then fire. But again, you'll need to take care when using this move. For one, when you've powered up the move to its max, there's no way to cancel out of it. Not even with the shield button. In other words, you're committed to firing it. So you see, a situation like this is pretty terrible. Once you've entered the stand, you won't be able to do anything. Oh shit. Which means it's quite the risky attack to use against fighters who have a move with the reflector effect. But you could always just aim into the fray, as it is, after all, a long-range move. Letting you deal a sudden blow to opponents. So, you need to think carefully when using this projectile weapon. Vila's final smash is called Progenitor God Ruptured Heaven. In the original game, there's a move called Ruptured Heaven. This is an enhanced version. As you can see, you team up with the mysterious Sothis and launch an attack together. Am I gonna buy that? Now, let's I talk about the color variations. I think I'll buy it's set up so that the default and odd-numbered color variations are male, while the even-numbered ones are female. However, the third, fourth, and fifth colors are, as you can see, reminiscent of the house leaders. Those of you who've played the original game will of course understand what I'm referring to. No, I'm not. The sixth color is based on Sothis, who you just saw earlier. And the seventh and eighth variations have a different hair color, which is based on... based on something that occurs in the course of the original game's story. Didn't we see this variation in the final Smash? Stage. Next, I'll introduce the stage. For this one, we of course tried to recreate the place where you spend most of the game, Garrig Mach Monastery. This is how Garrig Mach Monastery is laid out in the original game. 
From these, we chose to have it cycle through the marketplace, reception hall, bridge, and cathedral, all in one stage. It's the type of stage that rotates through different areas, such as these four. Let me introduce each of the guests that appear in these four areas. The first area is the marketplace. I think this is where a lot of people come to do their shopping. The guests that appear here are students of the Blue Lion's house, Dimitri, Dedu, and Ingrid. Not Dimitri, Dudu, or Ingrid. Their names are a bit difficult to say. They're largely from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Since it's a kingdom, that means they have a monarchy. For that reason, I guess you could say Dimitri is the future king. He had quite a difficult life and may or may not end up with just one eye. He's an unfortunate one, that one. There are vendors on either side. In the original game, these are important booths where you buy all sorts of things. But, uh, here you can break them, you see. If you do break them, the stage will expand to the left and right. I wonder where people will buy their supplies now. Mm. And in the background, you can see the gatekeeper. You often pass through this area in Fire Emblem Three Houses, and you end up talking to him a lot. Moving through these areas is possible thanks to this mysterious platform. Just when it seems like you've come to a stop, you'll come crashing back down. We've broken through the ceiling and slammed into the building. And the guests in the reception hall are Edelgard, Dorothea, and Petra of the Black Eagles. Take note, it's not spelled Edelgard. They're from the Adresian Empire. And as such, they embrace their military might. Edelgard is one of the characters who is central to the conflict. Depending on the path you take, she'll go through some terrible ordeals. You'll notice there are prominent chandeliers above the stage. It's possible to knock them down. However, Violet can't actually reach it, even though it's their stage. You can reach it with other fighters, though. So, it's nice if you can work your way up there by getting lucky and being launched up, or perhaps by using another fighter as a stepping stone. There we go, I made it. And you can knock it down. Also, you can break this table. Like so. Just like the sign that reads Fudin Kazan in the Suzaku Castle stage, it can break if you launch the opponent into it at close range. Next up, the bridge. The camera rotates 90 degrees, creating this long area. It's very wide indeed. It's similar to the bridge of Elden stage. The guests are from the Golden Deer, Claude, Hilda, and Lawrence. They belong to the Leicester Alliance. Because it's an alliance of many noble families, you could say that they have a wide assortment of members. And Claude is the sharpest of the bunch. Incidentally, both Claude and Hilda are the names of characters that appear in Genealogy of the Holy War, the fourth title in the Fire Emblem series. I guess once you've reached the 17th game and are creating 40 characters for each new entry, you're bound to get a bit of name overlap. The naming process must be tough. Hey, it looks like the Pegasus Knight is busy training. As for the bridge's design, it's just a long pathway, plain and simple. You can expect plenty of blows to be exchanged at the edges of the screen. You could also say it's a place where the fail knot really shines, and in this sense, I think it suits the Golden Deer perfectly. The last area is the cathedral, only with some platforms you can pass through. The guests appearing in the cathedral are Sedef, Flane, and Rhea. There's Sedef, who appears to have an extremely strong bond with his sister, Flane. She seems to be under the protection of him and Rhea, who you can see fighting during the opening of Fire Emblem Three Houses. All three have character quirks related to their true identities. I feel that Flane might be saying shush at this point, so I'll leave it at that. Shush. 
This is a simple area of the stage. All it has are these platforms. Being the last area, it may be a place where some intense battles will be waged. It'll cycle through each location in about two and a half minutes. Hmm. Okay, today we'll have a tag team battle in Squad Strike with the DLC team pitted against Fire Emblem protagonists from throughout the ages. That'll give us precisely five players per side. All right, here we go, Joker. Joker! What? Really? And Hero! What are you doing? Holy shit. Yeah, we really made a lot, huh? Banjo! Oh, jeez. By now, I think you know what I'm doing. But basically, I'm trying to defeat all five opponents with just the professor here. Yep. But as expected, it's going to be a pretty tough battle, so I'm using anything I can get my hands on. It's not going to land that easily. Uh oh, this is bad. Benigans. I better keep my distance. I'll use this chance to attack. Got him. That's oh, scary. He's oh, invincible for a moment here. Okay, that was close. Lots of explosives. Ouch. Stage can be a shield of that, huh? Good one. If I do this, like this, or like so. No anti air, huh? There, the soccer ball connected. Good, there's mom. You're in a good spot, mom. Ah, I shouldn't have taken that. Gardevoir. Well, I guess no one uses projectiles. At this point, it doesn't matter if Gardevoir's there or not. Get that. Get it. I feel like the enemy might get this smash ball. Whoa. See? They got it. Oh, yes. But I mustn't give up. I can't waste the chance. Wow. There's another smash ball. Yes. What? Oh my god. Now. What are you charging up for? Loki all Sakurai. There's still more. Whack. You can do it. Go on. You can take the hammer. But it's mine. Although, I'm scared I might get hit with a counter in this state. I hit him! I was trying to fight using Byleth's abilities alone, but what matters is that I won. Good game. Yep. It can be fun to play like this, especially in tag team, so I think it's a good idea to try imposing different types of challenges on yourself. The end. Now, about the additional music. Since it's from the Fire Emblem series, we'll be adding each of the new tracks to all the Fire Emblem stages. There are already a lot of Fire Emblem tracks in the game. Our selection this time has been made taking those existing tracks into consideration. Eleven songs are being added. This includes an arrangement of the main theme in both Japanese and English. I hope you'll enjoy these as well. I guess. We're also adding in a new spirit board. It includes the house leaders among some of the other popular characters. Cool. Sothis is legend class. Also, there's a new classic mode route, a heroic legacy, which is designed to let you enjoy classic Fire Emblem stages from throughout the series history. The final battle is against Master Hand and Crazy Hand. But you'll find that something pretty amusing happens, so look forward to that. Now for the Mii Fighter costumes. Please take a look. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Maybe there's gonna be something interesting. Mm. What? Assassin's Creed? Altair. Oh my god.
rabbits. A hat. So no doom enemy. I don't remember what to make a man X. Oh that one that one was on the on Smash 4. I kinda knew they were gonna re-add it. Mega Man Battle Network. That was also on Smash 4. That's it or What? What? Oh my god! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Is there gonna get? Oh music track! Oh my god! I knew it was gonna be for a me gunner if they did it! They did! Became reality! This time we're releasing a Cuphead costume. And for those of you who purchased the Cuphead costume, an additional song will be added. It's called Floral Fury, and it's the theme that plays when fighting Cagney Carnation. I hope you enjoy these as well. After purchasing a costume, I recommend using the sharing feature. If someone has created a Mi Fighter, you can play using the costume it's wearing immediately after you download it. And now, on to the Amiibo. Oh. The color palette nice. for Dark Samus looks pretty good, doesn't it? Dark Samus and Richter are planned for release on Friday, January 17th. And now, with the addition of Violet, the fighter's pass is finally complete. The lineup was Joker, Hero, Banjo and Kazooie, Terry Bogard, and Violet. From more than 70 fighters, only 5 have been added. But I must say, this game has always been an exceptional experience. And since the roster was already so large to begin with, right from the start, we intended to make the most out of the new gameplay mechanics and so on. There really were a lot of new mechanics, weren't there? When we add a new fighter, we don't simply make their attacks or their movements a little different. Instead, we try to offer you a whole new style of play. As I stated, we'll continue to release more DLC fighters down the line. I had thought that one or two might suffice, but, well, have a look. What? That's, that's nice. Oh my god, another, another fire pass. Six Asian fires, join the battle. Looks like there will be one more fighter than last time. <laughs> For this reason, we will be releasing the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume 2. It will be available for pre-purchase on the date shown, so please keep an eye out. Yep. And now that it's official, we intend to move ahead with development. Of course, like last time, the contents will remain unknown for now, and I'm personally very sorry that we have to release Fighters Pass Volume 2 when the details have yet to be revealed. Hmm. Hmm. Like last time, I'd be very grateful if, despite that, you would understand why and purchase it. Furthermore, the new additions have already been decided. Even if I receive many requests regarding potential candidates on Twitter, I'm afraid it would be very hard to consider them. Like Hayabusa and Rimu. But I still hope you'll look forward to it. Mm-hmm, <laughs> yes. We're also including a bonus with Fighters Pass Volume 2. Last time, it was a Rex costume. But this time, here's what we have. It's a Mii Fighter costume for Mii Sword Fighter, the ancient soldier gear from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. 
Hmm, looks nice. This looks will nice. not be for sale individually, so it can only be acquired as part of Fighter's Pass Volume 2. Lastly, what else? It's been reported that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the highest selling fighting game in the world. Yes, it is. Personally, I don't know if it counts as simply a fighting game, but I guess it's seen as a fighting game around the world. Seems like Street Fighter 2 was in the lead for a while, but now Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has surpassed it in total sales. However, I'm not sure if this is accurate. There were five versions of Street Fighter 2, or six to seven if you really want to get into the weeds. Plus, there's the arcade versions and the 25 ports to other systems, so I don't know if that's been accounted for. Also, I don't know if that really qualifies as one game. It's up for discussion. So, who knows? But when it comes to a single piece of software, it seems like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is number one. Although, I still don't know if it can really be called just a fighting game. What? I feel like it's become more than a fighting game, some sort of celebration of gaming or something else entirely. Also, I feel a deep attachment to the five DLC fighters. <laughs> The first Fighter's Pass just wrapped up, but it was decided that there would be more DLC, which means no breaks for me. I plan to keep working hard, so I hope you can continue to support us. That's it. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Are they gonna? I wonder if in the next day they're gonna show the. The six fighter. Uh, hmm. What do I think of this? Um, well, I was a bit disappointed when it was yet another Fire Emblem character, another Sword Fighter character. Uh, well, even I was thinking that it was going to be interesting if character like a character like Neptune, who's also a sword fighter, gets in. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind. But Fire Emblem... Hmm. I don't know if I should buy it. I Well, I think I'll buy it. Yes, I'll, I'll try it out. And to see if it's, it's really worth it. Oh, it's throwing up. Oh yeah, about the Cuffhead costume. Oh yes. It's really nice, really hype, it's really hype. Yet another full, uh, full character model just like Sans. I'm gonna download it right after recording this. And um, yeah, I'll buy it right after this. And I knew it. I knew Cuphead was gonna get in as a me gunner costume. Six Fire Emblem characters is kind of absurd, in my opinion. And well, I still hoping for Hayabusa and Rimu. What else do I have to say? Today is 6.42 a.m. And I have full sleep, yep. Hmm. Whatever. So, uh, well, I don't know what to say. So, uh, I'm going. I'm going to download the me, uh, the Cuphead costume. So, yes, this was a bit boring of a reaction video, but well, I guess the Cuphead part was gonna be. It's, it's, it's gonna be the best so yeah goodbye people i'll see you next uh probably nintendo direct or well i think it's gonna be on another direct where they're gonna announce the six fighter so yeah peace